Avatar was of course directed by James Cameron and this will conclude my series of James Cameron reviews leading up to the release of the new Avatar movie next week. I'm super excited for that film and I've had a blast talking about all his filmography but let's dive into Avatar. When Avatar came out in 2009 I loved the film but I was also very young and my love for it was mostly based on the visuals and the robots and the action sequences and I just loved it for what it was at the time and I still have tons of good memories going to the theater to see it even liking it a little bit more than my parents at the time. Having just finished watching it again and preparing to review it, I actually think my interpretation of the film when I was a young kid is probably the correct one. And what I mean by that is my interpretation of the film as a kid is actually the one which allowed me to enjoy the movie the most. Because going into it with a critical eye this time, I of course found issues with it. It's not a perfect film, but when I was a kid, I saw it for what it was, a beautiful visual experience that allows you to experience pure escapism and gives you emotional moments that work despite maybe a bland storyline. And that's one of the biggest things that people say today is that the film is bland, it's predictable, the story isn't that great, and all the other things can't really make up for that. Now, I do partially agree with that. And this film stars Sam Worthington as Jake Solly, and I don't love his character in the film. I'll be honest, he's probably one of the most boring main protagonists that James Cameron has in any of his films. And despite Zoe Saldana as Neytiri and Sigourney Weaver as Dr. Grace doing a really great job and giving great emotional performances here, it wasn't enough to convince me that the characters aren't a little bit bland and the story isn't extremely basic at its core. But with that said, again, I go back to that original experience I had in the theater. This movie is still beautiful today. This came out in 2009 and it's hard to tell. It really is. And that's something really rare for me to say when it comes to a film completely reliant on CGI, especially one that came out that long ago when we think about the fact that came out over 10 years ago. I usually say that when it comes to practical effects, like in most of James Cameron's films, but he relied completely on CGI here, which I could see myself back in 2009 if I was more into film and a lot older, like right now, I probably would have looked at it and thought, oh no, I'm really worried about seeing this film because James Cameron relying on CGI, what's happening to the world, but it holds up. And I don't know if it's the way he did it, the way they motion captured the characters, I'm not sure what it is, but the beauty, the escapism, the action sequences, it all holds up still today. And I'm very picky with action sequences as well. A lot of times when it's completely based in CGI, it does nothing for me. When I watch Avengers or any of the Marvel movies, I really don't get anything out of those action scenes. It doesn't do much for me. It's almost like my brain knows that it's not real and I don't get that adrenaline rush that I get from watching real life action movies with real shots. But despite that with Avatar completely, again, relying on CGI more than pretty much any movie I've ever seen, more than Marvel, it still holds up. I'm not sure if it's the way it's directed. I don't know what it is, but it works for me. The action sequences are really exciting. One of them at the end lasts for a really long time, the main battle in the movie. I still enjoy that today. I remember loving it as a kid and I love it even more now. And it really helps that pretty much every shot in the movie has Pandora in the background. Pandora is the beautiful world that Avatar takes place in. It's just gorgeous. Even back in 2009, they were able to make it so lush and feel real and alive. All the plants lighting up when they touch them. It's so satisfying to watch and it really feels like you're there. There's a scene where the main character, Jake, says he doesn't know what the dream is, whether it's him being a blue alien or him being a human. And I felt that as a viewer. It gets you so immersed into the world world that you almost forget that you're actually sitting on your couch and there's very few movies able to do that especially ones reliant on CG. Some of James Cameron's other films like Aliens or pretty much any movies from his filmography are super reliant on practical effects and it's one of the reasons that the atmosphere works so well and those movies do that for me. But somehow he was able to bring that directorial vision into Avatar and time flies by and you forget you're not actually in Pandora, you're just sitting on your couch watching beautiful colors all over the place. Now despite all these things, the film is also long and that's another big complaint about the movie that it's two and a half hours long or a little bit more. I agree. I think you could shave off a little bit of time. I don't love the beginning. I would say that's probably the weakest when they're kind of just explaining everything to you. Like, hey, this is how this works. This is what's going on. This is the pod you sleep in to become an avatar. It's kind of disappointing for James Cameron. I never felt that way with any of his other movies. I didn't have an issue with exposition there. So I'd say maybe cut off a little bit at the beginning in act one, but at the same time, it's such a strange concept that I can imagine it's kind of hard to convey that to the viewer. Like, hey, 
understand all this stuff so we can get into the story. So I do understand that. I would say though, if they cut a little bit of time at the beginning, the pacing would be a little bit better. I also think the environmental aspect of the film and the message it's trying to convey kind of hits a sore spot with some people. It's a touchy topic. For me, I didn't have an issue with it. I didn't think it was preachy and it still felt like its own world with its own issues. So for me, it took me into another world and I was okay with it. I didn't view it as a complete parallel to our world and they're trying to make a point there. And even if they were, I mean, the point is a positive point. I get that it can seem a little preachy and some people had an issue with that. Me personally, I didn't. I still enjoy the film for what it is and that's the way I think it's meant to be enjoyed. Overall, I really do love this movie. I think anybody watching it today can still get that experience they got back in 2009 in the theater. Pure escapism and an amazing world to explore. It's a movie that we have a lot to thank for. I mean, imagine how ground groundbreaking it was with the CG and the motion tracking back in 2009 when it came out and now today we have so much of that and it's probably Avatar to thank for a lot of that stuff especially with Alita Battle Angel I heard a lot of that technology came from Avatar so it's pretty cool and I'm excited to see what happens in the future and I'm especially excited for next week for Avatar The Way of Water. Now that movie is going to be even longer clocking in at I think close to three and a half hours. So get ready for a pee break at some point. And hopefully the pacing is good enough that it needs that much time and it uses that much time very well. I think it will and I'm really excited for it. Stay tuned for that review. I'll be doing it with my buddy Cameron who's also a huge fan of Avatar. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a blast getting to talk about all James Cameron's filmography. I can't thank you enough for all the support on the channel. I uploaded a short recently talking about how once I hit 200 subscribers as a thank you to you guys, I'm gonna be giving away a bunch of 4k blu-ray digital codes so just hop into that short leave a comment leave a like make sure you're subscribed i'll be uploading another video once i do hit 200 just to let everyone enter again into that video thank you guys again so much for the growth can't thank you enough anyway thanks for watching see ya